Now, if you've ever been in a science class, what we just did with that exploratory example and the dice should look very familiar because it's, it's the statistical version of the scientific process. So we had some hypotheses, right? We made a statement regarding the nature of the population, what we assumed to be true. Then we collected evidence, right? A sample data to test that, and then we analyzed those results. So in class, for example, um, step one, is when I pass out the dice, students pick up the dice and they don't even think anything of it. They just assume that the dice are fair. In other words, they're assuming that the parameter P, the probability of success, is one-sixth, right? You just assume that to be true. You assume, right, you, you picked up a die out of this box of dice I have, and that's what you're going to assume. Okay, so then the students collect data, well, they gather data, they collect evidence um, because they roll the dice. I sit there in class and have them roll those dice. So everybody in the class rolls the dice and we made a table of our results. Great, wonderful. But then what happens is they see Steve raise his hand at 12 right here and everybody's hackles go up. <laughs> They're like, wait a second, what's going on with him? Exactly. So that 12, that's unusual. That makes people go, what? Right? So they're analyzing in their heads what's going on, and that's step three, the analysis. So we analyze the data table, and we see that Steve's results looked very unusual. I'd like to throw the word very in there, but it'd make this line too long. Right? So, and again, the two methods for seeing that were that his results were very far away from the rest of the group. That's classical method, i.e. his z-score, or the probability of the fluke is very, 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 very low. That's the p-value method. All right, now we tested this with a population parameter. Um, you might not have realized it, but the parameter we were working with was the P equals 1 6, the um, population proportion. So we assume when you pick up the dice out of the box that it's 1 6. That's one of the parameters that we can test. Now, parameter is a characteristic of an entire population. So it would be everybody in the whole population, all the individuals, right? And we would know this value, or excuse me, we would not know this value, but it would be constant. There'd be some proportion, right? There. What, now, for dice, it's obvious, you know, 1 6. But for, you know, what percentage of people vote this way or what percentage of people think that? Uh, that's kind of not going to be a known thing. But it's constant, right? It just is, right? The universal percentage for this, that, and the other. The sample is what we can actually get our hands on, literally and figuratively. So I'm going to get a subset of that population, and I'm going to perform a test or call them up and ask them a survey question or whatever, or measure them somehow. That I can get, so that'll be known. But it's going to vary from sample to sample which is something we learned about in section 1.5 with uh, sampling error, the fact that all samples are slightly different. So we're going to use sample statistics to test population parameters. So there are four parameters that we are concerned with in particular, at least at this stage. We're concerned with the population proportion, P, the population mean, mu, the population variance, sigma squared, and the population standard deviation, sigma. Now these last two, we're actually not going to work with much at this stage. Um, they've been kind of shifted into uh, chapter 12, unless I change my mind about that later. But um, those are section uh, 10.4 in particular, but also later stuff as well in chapter 13. And then we're also concerned about the proportions, which we've been working with so far for those dice, and the mean.